They want to keep it fun. They want to keep it safe. If you're a country music fan, you may have seen Corb Lund in concert, but you've never seen him like this. Hey, you guys heard that Corb Lund is here tonight? Howdy, Saskatchewan. How are you? Everyone in the balconies, how you doing, folks? This is unusual. So this is our first show back, so thanks for coming to see us. Appreciate it. When the oil stops, everything stops. Nothing left in the fountain. Nobody wants paper money, son, so you just will stop capping. Can you break the horse? Can you light the fire? What's After months of concerts being canceled by COVID, some creative thinking has led him here. What's it been like for you since then? Well, it's been kind of a double-edged sword. We made a really good record, and I'm gonna plug it, it's called Agricultural Tragic, but it's one of our better records and we can't tour it, so that's the problem. But if you put those things, if I can compartmentalize those things. It's been a pretty good summer, because like I said, I don't usually get to spend time at home, and I've been writing a lot and playing a lot of music and uh, catching up with the family. You're in a parking lot at a, at a hotel in Regina about to do a gig. How, how does that feel? Well, it's actually kind of exciting because me and the guys haven't played for four months exactly almost, so it'll be pretty fun. She's never not had horses and she don't know what to do. The situation, I'm not sure if you'll describe it to people, but they've got a, a wall, the back wall of the hotel, all, every room has a, a balcony, and so we're sort of in the parkade roof below it so we're playing up to them. The Beatles played on the rooftop and played down to people, we're playing up to them. <laughs> when you break the horse, can you light the fire? What's that I beg your pardon? You best start thinking where your food comes from and I hope you tend a good garden. Have a good weekend. For stand-up comics, cramming audiences into small clubs just isn't an option these days. Ivan, how are you? Hello, I'm well. Slightly uh, unusual circumstances here. Two of Canada's best, Ivan Decker in Vancouver and Ali Hassan in Toronto, are still figuring out how to connect with their fans. Are you ready and going? Everything's great. I can hear you. So let's talk about comedy in 2020. We're months into the pandemic now. Ivan, what's it been like for you? Yeah, I mean, for the longest time, I, uh, I was retired, effectively. There was no, nowhere to perform. There were no shows happening. Everything just it was very sudden. Like, you know, all the clubs just immediately closed their doors. Yeah, I mean, I remember early May, my, my daughter was no school, and she was just like, I don't, I don't know who I, who I am anymore. And then a month later, I was saying that myself. I was like, who am I? I don't, if I'm not a comedian, I'm not an actor. I, I guess I'm an occasional broadcaster at the CBC, but... You know, uh, that's not a good business card, occasional broadcaster. Uh, <laughs> or even broadcaster, either way, not a good, th not a good thing on the, on the card. Yeah. And each of you guys took part in a Just For Last Drive-In show in Montreal. Fine, don't want to stop shooting pain through your body. How do you like that? So what was it like? I really, really enjoyed that. And it's, it's not something you would have uh, accepted or at the very least uh, enjoyed last year at this time. But now you had a group of, of comedians, really strong Canadian comedians, hungry to perform, and the audience were people who were hungry for entertainment and for laughter, and it, it was a beautiful mesh. I, I mean, it did something for my soul. Wow. Oh. So you've done one show here already, one uh, physically distant show. Yeah. How, how did it work? It worked okay. Believe it or not, this is comedy. This is the last bastion of live entertainment. You can't go see anything else. Did you know that? Every other live sports, it's all illegal. This is the only thing you're allowed to come and see. I don't have to do well. You have no other options. You know, with 20 people, that's enough yeah. for, for comedy to happen. I'd say it's like the minimum amount. This might be the reality for a year or two. So. How are you going to make it work? Yeah, I'm thinking of uh, getting into drywalling. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't know how anyone can see this unbelievably unpredictable, unprecedented situation and know exactly where this is going to go. So far, in all of these socially distant shows that I've seen or been involved in, 
they haven't had any trouble getting people to come, which is a great sign. You know, that indicates that this is something, this art form is something that people want to have happen and want to continue. <laughs> Welcome, welcome to my backyard. Singer-songwriter Jill Barber has been performing for nearly 20 years. And while the pandemic has, for the most part, kept her off stage, it is, perhaps to her own surprise, opening some new doors. Had you done all, an online show before? No, I was really reticent to, uh, to do an online show. To me, I, at first, I thought it would feel really um, disconnected from the audience. I didn't like the idea of performing to a computer screen. Hi, everybody. Welcome to my living room. A little different for all of us, right? Strange times. Stealing glances across a crowded room and taking a chance or two. This is a new way for all of us to enjoy a live musical show. Of no one. To do. So it's different than a dark theater where the audience is in darkness and nobody's looking at them. They're they were really kind of part of the show. I invited uh, folks to get in touch with me uh, with your stories. How are you? Hi, Deborah. Hi, Hello. Jeff. How are you? Thank you so much for your email. When I hear the song, give me strength that I need to leave my country and fight for our relationship. I'm so thrilled. I'm so thrilled that that is the case. And um, I, I really appreciate you sharing that with me because these, um, these are strange and uh, emotional times for people. And we all long to connect with one another. And when, when we open up, other people, other people open up as well. If you don't mind, just before you go away, won't you kiss me one more time? Thank you, everybody. It has been a difficult and isolating time for National Ballet soloists Tanya Howard and Sipe November. As they look for any outlet possible to continue to dance and move. So Ian here in Vancouver, welcome to both of you. Thank you very much for, for doing this. Thanks for having us, yeah. And let me start with this. How important is it for you to be performing in front of an audience? The audience was such a mirror for us when they would stand or when they would gasp. I mean, when you hear the audience gasp, you're like, oh my gosh, we, they get it, we did it. We, I, so that, um, that reflection, uh, once that is stripped from you, you really have to um, look inside in a different way. The more time we were away from the stage in the studio, you start to feel a little lost. Who am I without my work? I always say I'm, I'm a dancer, you know, and, and so it's like if I can't dance, then what am I? Sipe, for you, you have the Instagram videos. I don't know if that's a, a short-term thing or if you see your, that turning into to something bigger. What can you do over the next few months to keep your career going? There's an audience out there. The more I did these videos, that wanted to see these videos. People that were, you know, missing live performance. I think now what's happening is this merging of film and dance, photography, so that we bring dance into the digital space. We're gonna have to be innovative and creative and use all our platforms to really push dance in a way that 
we have we haven't really had to do before 